Yes, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. It's uh, my pleasure to be to participate in this webinar, and I would like to, uh, with team, I would like to present Mongolia um, nationally appropriate mitigation action for grassland livestock management. Climate change in Mongolia has been acknowledged as a significant threat to Mongolia's economic growth, sustainable development, and in also fragile environment. And uh, Mongolia has experienced the documented changes in the past 60 years. And the annual mean temperature in Mongolia has increased by 2.1 Celsius, which is three times larger than world average in the past 60 years. And warming is actually projected to further incline by 5% by the end of this century, which actually bringing Mongolia to more like a tipping point the climate change impact actually is uh, quite significant, especially in uh, dry grassland area, and it, it decreases grassland production. It also affects to the soil, you know, uh, soil surface temperature that is actually uh, affecting to the low productivity in the dry steppe and desert steppe areas. Also associated changes in plant communities. And um, all this kind of uh, climate change impact cause uh, Mongolia really to think uh, how to design uh, well-designed actions to mitigate climate change. Uh, at the same time, provide multiple benefits Actually, emissions come primarily from the energy and the agriculture sector. And in, in agriculture improvement, improvements um, in, uh, and livestock management can reduce emissions while also increasing productivity and the long-term sustainability of agricultural production. Combining of the various systems of, and also tapping existing resources is quite significant step forward for us now to really uh, pursue forward NAMA in Mongolia in the agriculture sector. And with this, I would like to uh, hand the floor to Dr. Tenekait. Thank you, Bakitschik. I would like to give you an, an, an overview of what the work the, about the work that was done in, in Mongolia on the NAMA development. So here see, you see the framework of the, the, the NAMA development and basically there's three different levels. There's a technical level, an institution, a policy level. And you see a lot of activities that need to be done. We call them key design element for a NAMA. And on the right hand side, you also see that there are certain activities that need to be done at the, uh, at the sectoral level and some at the national. Because at the national level, it's envisaged that there are a number of NAMARs and maybe one from agriculture and one from energy, one from transport. So also in terms of coordination, it's very important that you are in contact with also the, the national level that co coordinates overall activities. So now in my next slide, you see uh, some of the elements I will talk about. So I will, I will highlight some of the technical features as well as institutional and some policy aspect. Policy alignment is the most important task when planning an armor. So you should look into what are the, what are the agricultural subsectors that have a priority within um, the government programs, within uh, larger uh, strategies. For example, here, we, we looked into the, the different strategies like the national development strategies, the national action plan on climate change, and, and then also more um, the state policy on food security and the national livestock program. And after reviewing them, it was pretty much obvious that the national livestock program was the most promising entry point because there's a significant budget available and also human resource to implement this program. That means, and at the same time, the sector contributes a significant amount of emissions. So that was the reason um, the, um, the, the climate envoy of Mongolia, together with the head of the Ministry of Agriculture, decided to use this opportunity to, to link it to a NAMA development. So 
when we're looking into the mitigation potential of the National Livestock Program, we basically analyze the different components. And the key components that have a significant mitigation potential we analyzed is a, is a herd size targets, selected productivity interventions, and grassland carbon sequestration potential. On the first and the second, third point, I will, I will give you some more information in the coming slides. But keep in mind, this was an analysis of the technical mitigation potential, which is not considering the financing implications as well as adoption rate. So this is also something you have to keep uh, in mind when doing analysis on potential. So what you see here on the next slide is the climate benefits related to revise the herd size and the herd structure. As Pakishik mentioned before, currently the herd size is beyond 40 million animals and this is definitely too much considering the carrying capacity. So it is important to reduce herd size to a sustainable level and this by itself will provide certain emission reductions. But there's also the potential to change the herd structure and the age class distribution. So what you see here is with these measures on, on herd size and, and structural changes, you can reduce in the, in the range of 3.2 million tons by 2021. On the next slide, you see uh, work that was done to understand the mitigation potential related to soil carbon sequestration in rangelands. And on the map, you see Mongolia and you see those areas that have a sequestration potential. The gray areas are the arid and semi-arid areas where improved management will not trigger soil carbon stock changes. So what you see here, there's, a, there's, there's a particular certain areas in dark brown where you have a large mitigation. If you would make sure that, that, the, that there's no overgrazing, that's sustainable grazing. And basically what is required in terms of activity, you need some, at, at, the, at the herder level, you need some activities like grazing management planning, you have to introduce rotational grazing which requires that you have water holes in certain areas. And all these activities are already done and promoted in the framework of this livestock program. So there are synergies between the livestock program and this NAMA component. So calculating the emission reduction which based on, on, on soil sampling, uh, using modeling to understand the impact of a certain carrying capacity on the uh, soil carbon sequestration rates, reveal a, a technical mitigation potential of 29 million tons per year. To put this into context, this is roughly um, a third of the technical mitigation potential in the energy, energy sector, but 18 times larger than the industry. So it's basically also in terms of mitigation potential significant for Mongolia. But of course, there are a lot of issues related to uh, adoption barriers. And, and if you're interested, Pakishik can, can provide you more information during the discussion on that. So after you have identified your technical mitigation potential, it's important to do a cost-benefit analysis to understand the cost implication. So what you see here is the, the cost benefits for certain mitigation practices. And this is suppressed in, in the so-called abatement costs. What would the adoption of these practices cost? And a negative adoption means by investing this, you even generate a net positive return. So actually improving sheep breeding has a significant economic return, while the two other activities, dairy artificial insemination and beef improvement, the financial sustainability is, is not so promising. That means it would require additional public funding to, to really do this. So this is crucial, but also keep in mind abatement costs do not reflect certain kind of costs such as transaction costs, costs related to policy, transformation, etc. So there are also additional costs to be considered. Related to monitoring, this is, this is really key for NAMAR because payments are based on results. And results initially can be defined as adoption of certain practices, but sooner or later it will be defined as, as ton CO2 sequestered or reduced. So here you see for the grassland carbon monitoring component how such a monitoring could look like in grassland. So you have the track one, which is a monitoring by the SUM. This is a local administration level. 
They have extension workers in place linked to the livestock program. They could do a kind of statistical sampling in order to verify sampling that was done in a track two, which is a sampling actually done by herders. So the herders would, would basically record um, their, their herd size, their grazing, potential, uh, grazing patterns, and with this kind of activity information, if you combine it with soil carbon models, you get an idea about the mitigation potential. And what's very important, in order to make sure that such, such a monitoring system works, you have to collect parameters that are relevant for, for multiple purpose and for the, for, the, for the local people. In terms of herders will only collect information that enables them to better manage pasture. Carbon monitoring embedded into program monitoring or national monitoring is really crucial also to reduce monitoring costs and to provide multiple benefits from the monitoring results. So what are now the implementation actions that have to follow in Mongolia? We have summarized them in two groups, the so-called quick wins and the fast-tracked actions. The quick wins are those practices that should be adopted in any case, with or without climate finance, because they are aligned with, uh, with the National Livestock Program. They bring immediate benefits. Issues like this are is to introduce result-based monitoring evaluation systems, what currently does not exist. To give you an example, the Livestock Program is at currently monitoring the number of injections distributed or the number of liter of vaccines distributed. But they're not monitoring the, the results, the number of element, uh, um, animals treated, or the success rate, or the impact on diseases. So this is a very important activity that should happen anyway, considering the large investments of the National Livestock Program. Other activities are to assess barriers of adoption and of best practices to consult with stakeholders, to submit an AMA to the UNFCCC registry. As um, Gesine mentioned, most of NAMA's activities are not yet reported. And to pilot, in particular, GHG um, monitoring methods. So to give you an example, based on the work that was done currently, um, point one and then the last point are, are tackled by a, a small research component um, implemented by the World Agroforestry Center on developing activity monitoring systems for the National Livestock Program that can be used for NAMA monitoring. And then we have so-called fast-tracked actions, what are, what are also important, but they're very specific to NAMA. Without a NAMA, you don't have to engage on it. So this is basically everything that deals with, with um, attracting climate finance, making sure that activities are aligned with other NAMARs, and um, uh, really, in addition to the activity monitoring, making sure that you, from monitoring activities, can provide robust estimates on the mitigation potential, which means you have to develop so-called emission factors that you know when certain activities are adopted, how much emission reductions they provide. At this point, um, I want to acknowledge the, the strong support of the government of Mongolia and their specific interest to, to push the, this um, livestock and grassland NAMAR. And of course, the, the herders that have been involved in this, in this work, because there was a significant amount of field work done, the work was financed by the Asian Development Bank in a project actually to reduce desertification in the region. You may know that a lot of the desertification in Mongolia has significant impacts, for example, on the, on the air conditions in China. So, so therefore, there's a, there's a regional strong interest to reduce desertification in, in Mongolia. If you have more interest, if you have, want to know any more specific things about the activities, the key elements developed, you can, I refer to this uh, internet link that provides you a, a summary of the work.